Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Today at the midweek days, we're going to be reading out of Romans chapter 8. I'll start reading in verse 28. And we know that all things work together for God, for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he pre for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, when he predestined these, he also called whom he called. These he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. It's uh, definitely predestined according to his word and uh, called and justified and then finally glorified. That's if we go the distance, of course. And I told our message today, the omniscient the omni side. The God we serve is omni. He's all. He is uh, omnipresent. He is omniscient and omnipotent or omnipotent. We are uh, wise if we choose to walk on the omni side of life, we walk on God's side. And if we're wise, we'll be on God's side. And sometimes it's not too bright. There are valleys hills, mountains, <laughs> jungles, and shadows of death. Amen. The omni side. When, when we walk on God's side of life, on the narrow road, uh, we can smile at the storm, we can chill. We can rest in Him. And so the Lord, the Lord wants us to pull out the banana chair. He wants us to zero in and focus on on his greatness so we'll be relieved and revived and uh, repositioned after a battle daily Daily, not a flash in the pan thing, but a lifestyle. When I hear people talking about revival, oh, they're going to have a revival meeting. I 
automatically think of crash diets. <laughs> they don't work. When people go on diets, they usually come back worse. They come back stronger and eat more. And uh, they start exercising and eat more. But uh, that's not the answer. There has to be change. We have to change our mindset. And the Lord's helping us there. With his word, renewing our minds as we go along. Transforming the mind through the Word of God. We always look on the omni side of life. We always walk on the omni side. That's where we're laughing, that's where the joy is. Always walk. On the omni side of life. The Lord Jesus uh, shown us the oppressive climate of today. And uh, He gives us a word. He always gives us a word in season, doesn't he? If we start to get weary, he gives us a word in season. If we go over to Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Um, 50. The Lord doesn't leave us abandoned. He's always there endeavouring to lift us up. Isaiah 50 and the verse is The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear. <coughs> Here, as the learned, the Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. Referring to Messiah, confirmation goes on to say, I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. And so, um, yeah, we can be assured of that. We can be assured that the Lord will give us uh, a word in season. Someone uh, with the tongue of the learned. If you know how to speak a word in season, if you move in the spirit and not uh, 
emotionally. Not moving recklessly. But someone who knows how to speak a word in season at the exact time. And when a word's in season, there's fruit. Eh? Trees in season bring forth fruit in their season. And the Lord, he knows how to even bring uh, water out of dry gullies. He doesn't need the clouds. He has so, uh, showed us that and told us that. He doesn't need the clouds. Even though they may be his workmen, <laughs> even though the clouds and the sun and the moon and the stars, they all do work for him. He uh, he doesn't need anything because he's the creator. He's Yahweh, totally self-existent one. So he wants us to always walk on the omniscient, understand and remember. Our God is all powerful. Our God is all knowing. Our God is all present. He's not limited. If you go on holidays, He's there with you. He's gone with you on holidays. <laughs> eh? If you've been. Uh, unrighteously judged and, and sent to prison, he's there with you. Okay. He's with everyone who walks with him. Everyone who would uh, trust in him Isaiah 26 3. He would keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed and staked upon the Lord. I firmly believe that we could not, we cannot, have a greater person with us. <coughs> Impossible to have a greater person than God with us. We should be so grateful we're singing unto the Lord new songs. We should be so uh, thankful we give thanks with a grateful heart to the Holy One because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks, because he has given Jesus Christ his Son. 
yes, Jesus has a father. Right? And boy, isn't the climate oppressive in the world today. Everyone's calling it stress, but it's the oppression of the God of this world, Satan. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. The tongue of the learned, um, tongue of the learned is well aware and the learned are well aware that we got it all. <laughs> we got Father and Son and Holy Ghost, angels and brethren and the Word of God. We got it all. Let's press on. That's the only reason why we can press on. Because we got the Father, we got the Son and the Holy Ghost. Eh? And uh, the learned are well aware that our God is all powerful, all knowing, all present. So if this is the case, uh, let's smile. Let's go forward. Let's rejoice in the Lord always. Let's uh, go out there today and, and tell of um, how great our Lord is. Let's boast about our Lord in any way and every way you can. Of late, I, I've been boasting of uh, of my Lord Jesus with tattoos, and a lot of people don't like it. You know, the religious people are jumping up and down, and uh, you know, swinging their rosary beads around or whatever they're doing, but they don't understand. See. They're judging by appearance. They don't understand that I come to that place now after going towards 36 years that I'm forever looking for another way to praise, exalt, make mention of and glorify in and be grateful for my saviour and the countless people that have said oh what's that on your arm there and what's this and what's that and what's that mean what's those numbers on your arm mean and I've had opportunity to explain to them oh they say and I've had opportunity then to give them the word of God which is able to say the word of God is able to deliver, set free, give peace to, give joy to. Jesus is the word of God. But, um, yeah, so many people uh, choose to be religious, you know, like the Church of England. And the Uniting Church and the Baptist. Even the Pentecostals, they're very religious too, aren't they? With their revival, don't know, it's revival or healing, isn't it? That's the only way they get them in. Revival, healing, or God's going to give you a hundredfold on your ten dollar offering. Give a hundred, get a thousand, or something like that. It's all skew if it doesn't line up with scripture. Oh, Jesus is going to heal everyone here today. We're having a healing meeting. Unheard of. 
and scripture. They had meetings, but they didn't have specific healing meetings because they were leaving it to the Holy Ghost to do what he wanted. You have a meeting, and some are saved, some are healed, some are convicted, some are rebuked, some... Whatever the Spirit is moving, when the Spirit is moving, it moves differently on each individual in every meeting. So, tongue of the learned. And we need to know how to speak a word. And we go over to uh, Peter. We'll get a start there anyway in Peter. We'll be off to a good start in 1 Peter 4.11, which says, in my Bible, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him minister, let him do it, I should say, as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we're off to a good start. He tells us uh, how to speak, doesn't he? If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles. You know, don't speak as the world speaks. You know, the world's got their sayings. And they think they're pretty clever, you know, they're, the world with their sayings. But their sayings are pretty corny, really. And they're a bit empty. Like fully empty, <laughs> but the, the oracles of God are, are so beautiful. The oracles of God are so poetic and uh, musical. The oracles of God, um, oh, sweet to the soul, help to the bones. That's why the Lord wants us to speak the oracles. He wants us to speak his word. Um, the greatest medicinal compound there be is the word of God. I mean, I hear the word of God or I read the word of God either way. I'm hearing what I'm reading anyway, but I mean, if I hear it spoken or, or I'm reading it, a beautiful thing happens in in my inner man. It's um, I can't fully explain. It's so out there, you know, <laughs> and so otherworldly, you could say. It's a beautiful thing. It's a uh, spiritual and. It's something that you don't need to hum, you know, do the old um, do the old Buddhist thing, hike up into a mountain somewhere to get close to God. Well, that's, that's in the flesh, aren't they? When Jesus went aside, it was only to uh, separate him and his disciples from the the mob thronging, you know. There was a great group uh, wanting to hear what he had to say. You know, I mean, a lot of people do want to hear. But they don't want to do, do they? And we've got to do what we do, do well. Well, the Lord says heartily. Heartily. You've got to do it heartily. Passionately. Huh? And then it'll be a, a good, a good presentation. So we speak as the oracles of God. If anyone speaks, then he speaks as the oracle. And then if you get a minister, 
a minister with the ability that God has given. With these two, you can be assured, can't you? Because we've already established that God is omni, omniscient, knows everything, and omnipresent. He's everywhere at once and omnipotent. All powerful. So how can you go wrong if you speak his word and you minister with the ability he's given you and you don't mistrust him and doubt him? And go to a Bible college because you think that they can show you how to minister, but they can't. No man can do the job that the Spirit can do. It's simple as that. (coughs) No one can show you how to minister like the Holy Ghost. Nobody does it better. Makes you feel sad for the religious. Nobody does it quite like the paraclete. He is surely the best. No one, absolutely no one, does it like. The leading of the Spirit, ah, oh, boy, boy, how amazing. And we, I mentioned that last Sunday about, I got a message, oh, I got last Sunday's message. Um, the gap is closing around about Tuesday last week and then I came stumbled, so to speak, across a, a photo of a a biker club. They look Australian. I didn't bother to go into it because I was on my way somewhere else looking for something else, but I I stumbled across it on the internet, a biker club in in Thailand. Bang. Friday I get get an email from Thailand, from a young fella, young brother, (coughs) who's about 25 years older now, of course, when I first met him, and he was inspired by my preaching down at King George Square, and many have been down there too, inspired. I was there for many years. By the Spirit, see? By the Spirit. People get that inspiration and joy and encouragement. A lot of people don't understand why I put photos up all the time. Everything's got a photo. Everything I say virtually has got a picture with it. Because every picture tells a story, story. You ask Roger Stewart. Every picture tells a story, don't it? You know, even I myself, when I read something, I look for a picture and I'm looking at the picture as I'm reading. It, it's enhancing. It, it's very um, fulfilling. So that's why I throw pictures in. I like to throw photos in with everything. And it finishes it off, you know. Sometimes it's a bit of a draw card. On our brochures it is. I'll put on the front a picture of whatever the subject matter is and what you know, whoever's speaking or whatever. <coughs> but it's all all handy for the uh, lifting up of Jesus and praising of him and what he's done for us and for me. But uh yeah. That's the power of the Spirit, see? All the way along, three shots in a row. 
for preparation of the message for Sunday, and then the seeing the Australian bikers set up there in Thailand. Then Brother Anthony contacted me from Thailand. Wouldn't hear about it, would you? Like you wouldn't read about it in the Korean Mail. <laughs> The omni side, eh? Oh, always walk on the omni side of life. <laughs> then you're safe. When you when you walk on the narrow, you walk with Jesus. Then you're safe. Because the old devil, uh, and the, his minions. He's out there, and uh, he wants to stop you. He either wants to stop you or he doesn't want you to get there and walk on the omni side of life, uh, walk in the light as he is in the light, that you may have might to fight, to fight a faith. Faithfully, for Father, to the finish, eh? And the time will come, the time will come When I call you home The time will come when I call you home But until that day proclaim my word Oh, energies O oh, son of thunder, O oh, energy, O oh, son of thunder, proclaim these words I give to you today. In a dry and dark land, I have raised you up to be a voice for your father above. And I called you with a holy calling. Before you were born, I anointed you. Before you were born, I anointed you. And I called you with a holy calling. You see, the Lord is so great, we've missed it. <laughs> the Lord is so great. We, we forget, and people today have forgotten under, under the oppression of the evil one. People have forgotten the greatness of God. Most people don't even have any time to think how great thou art. Right? And when that happens, we feel like we have to take things into our own hands, don't we? And things just go downhill then. It's all gone south. It's a totally different story with the Omni side when we lock into the Omni God, it's hands off. It's just sit in the back and enjoy the ride because he's leading, isn't he? He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hey? For his name's sake. He lays me down in the green paddocks. It's all good stuff, isn't it? Paths of righteousness, green paddocks, still waters. It's all good stuff. It's all banana boat stuff. It's all banana chair material, right? Chilling on the sand, so to speak. Not necessarily drinking pina colada, but 
um, just letting the Lord have his way. I think the word would be beautiful. I think the word that would probably sum it up, beautiful. You are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? He, 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 he. You're everything I hope for. You're everything I need. That's the Lord. Everything. He, he's, he's, he's got it all. <laughs> he's everything. Huh? Makes you want to cry, doesn't it? With joy. That we've allowed him into our lives. And he doesn't intrude. He wants us to make that decision. You choose. You choose today. Whom you're going to worship and praise. Eh? You choose. You choose. We to, he wants us to, the Lord wants us to kiss the king, doesn't he? As we read in Psalm 2. And that can get heavy if you don't. We go to Psalm 2. And, <clears throat> and have a look. Powerful. Powerful verse. In Psalm 2, verse 12, kiss the son, lest he get, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all who put their trust in him, see? Kiss the, the son, kiss the And if you don't, that's talking about paying homage, isn't it? Talking about worship, praise. I like to stay in that mode for the last 35 and a half years. I like to stay in that mode, in the kiss the sun mode. <laughs> hey? I'm safe there when I when I worship and praise and pay homage to the Lord Jesus. There's such great uh, confirmation of safety and strength and and um, riches and beauty, power, glory. So wonderful. It sort of reminds me of um, when in the scriptures they kept their hands up praising the Lord and man alive, the power that came upon them. Just like the marching around the walls of Jericho Joshua fit the battle at Jericho and the walls come tumbling down good morning brother John <laughs> hey? that's in the in the in the um Continuance, eh? 
That's why the Lord wants us to continue. We get that power when we continue. Right? Goodness comes our way as we continue in the Word. It's only good. All things are working. All things are working to good. All things are on the job. And we know, Romans 8, 28, initial verse, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, love respect, revere to those who are called according to his purpose. Hey? It's not going to work for those who are called according to their purpose. Hey? You go out there and do things your own way and do things to make things rosy for you. Hey? But just speaking the oracles, ministering with the, uh, the ability he's given you. It's a gift. It's a gift. And if we don't uh, see it that way or accept that, we push him aside and we create our own monster. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it might be a, a Church of England monster or Roman Catholic monster marching up and down the aisle with gowns on and gold, gold thread gowns swinging Mary Jane round in a bowl or incense or whatever they want to call it. And the congregation of passive smoking. <laughs> Snorting incense. That's when they don't do things. Uh, they're not speaking the oracles. Uh, in full array, full council. And they're not measuring with the ability God's given. God doesn't have a priesthood anymore, a natural priesthood, because the veil was torn in the temple. And Jesus gave up the ghost and said, it's finished. It all has been accomplished and it is finished. And the veil was torn. And there's no need for a priest anymore. They're just mocking God and, and upsetting the house of the Lord by saying such rubbish because Jesus done the job. Yeah, that's, I've said it 153 times or more <laughs> about um, Reverend Sun Moon and the audacity and, and the gall to say that Jesus never cut the mustard at the tree. So he stepped in there, him and his wife, and they're sitting on plastic, gold plastic thrones, drinking plonk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Reverend Sun Moon. Saying, oh, he's taking the reins now because Jesus never finished the job. Oh, give it a break. Hey? And he's got them coming in. He, he's got the people coming in by the millions. It, it, hey? Everything's white. When I see that, I, look, the alarm bells go off. All the white suits and white ties and white shoes and white hair. And if any hindrance is no different. He's no different, and, and nor is that uh, Yakalomi, o, o Yakalomi, or whatever his 
African, South African. Another Nigerian scammer. It's all blab, blab, blab. Take them out on the street. They're all claiming healing and miracles. Look, there's a short test. Take them out on the street. And dress them up in ordinary clothes. And uh, wear some old city or town where no one knows, wouldn't know who they were and say, look, get over here. I want you to lay your hands on this person here. No organs, no no contemporary music blasting or simmering in the background. And let's see what they can do. <laughs> I tell you what, it would be a Red Faces show. Nothing would be happening. Eh? Nothing would be happening. It's all conjured up. It's a concoction. Witchcraft, voodoo, and just mesmerising uh, muck. Proof is in the pudding. If you got the goods, you don't have to... Oh, it's raining today. I can't heal anyone. Eh? Oh, it's too cold. It's too cold today. I can't do any deliverance. I, I can't... Can't... Um, turn the water into wine today because... It's, the humidity is too high or something. No, Peter was Peter sitting in the street it had nothing to do with him. And his shadow was there. And the, some bloke walked by and got healed. Or, oh. yeah, so I don't know whether it was, was he lame or something like that or something, so he had something wrong with him. And he got healed. Oh, he was blind, maybe. Went by and got healed. There's no this of the thou, thou, reverend doctor, father, mother. You know, put your money in the bag and... Uh, get out the front and uh, put on a show. There's none of, none of that. We need to get it right. We, we need to get out of the deception and the darkness and get back to the omni side of life. Amen. Everything will be sweet if we just speak as the oracles of God. You know? Doesn't matter. Look. Minister with the ability he's given, speak as the oracles of God. You're not waiting to feel fruit tingles or anything else down your back. You know? Or paschal jubes. Forget all that. It's got nothing to do with it. The Lord's going to do it if he's going to do it. <laughs> and he ain't going to change it. If God wills, I will live tomorrow. I will speak again. I, I will minister with the ability he's given me and I'll speak the oracles of God. If God willing, I'll do it again today. And boy, I tell you what, there's never a dull moment. Eh? Never a dull moment. Not for me. I don't know about the rest of them. I don't know if they need Jesus plus, but I don't. Jesus is enough. Jesus done it all for me. Up there upon the tree. Gave up the ghost and gave us the victory nothing been left undone all has been accomplished there he nailed it all to the tree didn't he hallelujah to land Jesus done it all for me Jesus done it all for me he's the one and 
that's that's our strength. That's our strength. That we're following him. Like we're following the Omni. You don't need any more strength than that. That you're following him, you know. In the in the natural, you know, you, you might uh, you going to dinner with a great sports person. Everyone knows this person. Everyone in the world and say, "Wow, look who's over there, and look who's with him." You know. Um, in, in the bike world, you might say, "Oh, look, they're riding with he, he, he's riding with the hell's angels." You know, in biker talk, that's top, top of the heap. But hey, let, let's let's put that aside for a minute. We're following and walking with the Omni. I'm talking Jesus here. <laughs> I'm talking Jesus. It took 39 stripes, that's 40 less one. Took every stripe just as they come. Hung on the cross for sinners, you see. Thirty nine stripes brought healing for me. I'm talking Jesus. That's the top of everything. King of kings, Lord of lords. Hey, the great I am, the I am he, the one that was and the one that is. The one that's coming and the one that's within. <laughs> All of this makes makes you want to laugh, doesn't it? Makes you just want to laugh and and never stop laughing and smile. I'm sure people wonder when I go to a cafe. I'm sitting there on my own, maybe having a cup of tea, and I'm I'm smiling all over the place. I'm sure they're wondering, what's he smiling about? I'm sure of it. Eh? Sometimes I'm ready to burst out laughing because the joy is all over me. The spirit of God and of glory rests upon me. Blessed are you when you are persecuted. Eh? You know, some people think that um, persecution, it's sort of like something that, that happens. When you walk on the Omni and you walk with Jesus, there's no end of it. It's just a flow. It, it's just like you, when you walk with Jesus, you've got this f continuous flow of persecution and you've got a continuous flow of joy and a continuous flow of peace. When you walk with Jesus, when you do what the Lord says, It is very, very hard to put words to because it's a spiritual thing. Eh? It's a spiritual thing. It's a wonderful thing and, and very mysterious. Very, uh, oh, highly, highly interesting. I find it intriguing, very, the most uh, wonderful experience I've ever known. Sometimes it's just like he's, he's literally there. <laughs> Sometimes. You know, it's sort of like so tangible. His presence is so tangible. You, you, you like he can explode. You just sort of have to, like your um, your head bowed in the spirit as you walk along. But you're looking up, 
you're looking forward, but it's like your head's bowed in respect. Absolutely amazing uh, is the devil's work, the darkness, work of the darkness, to stop you from walking on the omni side. Because it's all powerful, it's all knowing, and it's all, uh, he's all present. See? Devil don't want you to get wind of that. Because you become unstoppable. You, you be, you, you, um, not just become unstoppable, you become an overcomer. And then more than an overcomer. And that threatens the devil's kingdom. Because he has to and wants to gather as many as possible to his own uh, name, so to speak. Uh, he don't want you following Jesus. <laughs> he don't want you following Jesus. Because he's jealous. Jealous of Jesus. And when you walk with Jesus, you're jealous of no one. And we know that jealousy is the cruelest to grave. Uh, we know how pathetic jealousy is. It's ignorant, very ignorant attitude. But the Lord has... Uh, Shown us clearly in his word, there's nothing to be jealous about. Because what you got is is what the Omni sees fit to give you. So we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Humble ourselves under the mighty word. Jesus and he may exalt you in due season okay. but on the omni side of life uh, all things are working like clockwork they're working for your good it's all good It's all good. Because he's called you to that. Romans 8, 29. For whom he foreknew. See, we're going to see a bit of Jeremiah here. I knew you before you entered the womb, see. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed. Well, that was his uh, his predestination for us was to be conformed to the image of Jesus, see, of his son. Oh, he has a son. Yes, yes, yes. Father has a son. Unlike the modalist and the oneness. <laughs> But he formed you, see, so you got, you got that word for you, and then you've got uh, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Right? Jesus, that's what he wants, many brethren, brothers and sisters in the Lord. And verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Right? So he made sure you got wind of it and called you. He, didn't, he predestined you. That's on his side of the fence. And then he called you. 
and to let you know, sort of like mum, you know, mum calls out, oh, my mum is now, we've been running around, like wild animals down in the backyard, <laughs> And Mum would get on the back steps and call out, come on, have some lunch now, we've got such sandwiches. We've got corned beef sandwiches or something. Tells us what it is. Eh? But she predestined that feed. She predestined the lunch. For me and a couple of mates probably. Or a couple of mates and I. Whatever. And then she predestined that and us to have that lunch and then she called us and told us what the lunch was and then uh, those that he called he also justifies right? that's if we answer the call of course right? he'll make things clear he made things clear for us that all this way because we came to him. Came to the rivers of life. Came to the fountain. Come to the waters there is a vast supply. Come to the river that's filled with his great love. There's a vast supply. So anyway, justified. And we get wind of that too by by his spirit. We pick it up that we're justified. Eh? We pick it up that he's was that propitiation for our sin. And then this strikes a great um, gratitude. Uh, thankfulness within us and we walk on and, and we, we stick to it we continue on and, and endure right? as we looked at the other day those who endure will be saved if you don't endure how can you be saved? So, we go over to Job and we'll have a look at Job here in Job chapter 1. And we'll go to verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them and the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Where goest thou? And so Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless, upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, round his house, and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands 
and his possessions have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, and he did not lay a hand on the person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. He said, you can do what you like, but don't take him out. See? If God wills to live tomorrow. And the punchline is, verse 7, And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth. To and fro, back and forth. It's sort of like these Pentecostal preachers, don't they? They get up on the altar and they walk to and fro, back and forth. <laughs> you know, they don't stand still in the pulpit. And Jesus got into the pulpit and he stood still, didn't he? And he read from Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Preach the gospel to the poor, heal the broken heart, said, Set the captive free and set at liberty those who are oppressed by the devil. Priest the approach with the year of the Lord. See, the devil's going to and fro and back and forth. That's what he does all day. Walking back and forth, going to and fro. And he's going around there and he is there to. Uh, deter us. He don't want you walking in the light of the Omni One. He don't want you on the Omni side of life. He wants you to deter you, get you off that. He wants you back on the wide road. Or as we looked at last Sunday, the the road. <laughs> it's all been smeared. Eh? the smear tactics of Satan that there's everything's been blurred there's no wide road there's no narrow road there's just the road and we're all together we're all in this together we're all going in the same direction no we're not when we come to the Lord we do a, a 180 don't we so how can we all be in this together and you can't walk in two directions at the same time. You have to make a choice, don't we? Unto death. So, persecution's on its way, as Brother Anthony would say from Thailand to me last week. It's all shutting down. They, they're getting nasty. They're bringing out the big cannons, heavy artillery, trying to shut the preachers down. They don't want the word going out, but the word will go out because we know the scripture says that the word, everyone will hear the gospel in every nation. The gospel will be preached to all nations. Will, will, will be done. Because the omni... <coughs> The Omni God, Yahweh, all powerful, all present, and all uh, knowing. I mean, how can you get around that? <laughs> how can you beat one like that? It's impossible. Impossibility to better or beat, overcome God Almighty. Impossibility. He's the great I am. So, we're up against this uh, defeated foe who goes about, walks around the earth. You walk around the place there somewhere. <coughs> if you run into him, just let him know that you're on the Omni side. He won't like that. Ooh. Let's go over to 1 Peter. And we look to finish up, eh? One Peter. 
from Pedro. One ton of mirror. David is one ton of mirror. One Peter five. And the verses. The verse in my Bible is eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because, you like that? Be sober, be vigilant, because. It's all beautifully, isn't it? Beautifully poetic. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he made a vow. What? Is this... This bloke crazy? Peter, is he insane or something? Devil? <laughs> what would the world say to that? They'd say, he's crazy, that bloke. Devil. <laughs> he's saying there's a devil walking about. <laughs> what a fruit loop. Well, Job said it and Peter said it. Out of the mouths of two or more. To and fro, back and forth. Eh? Just like the preachers on the altar. <laughs> I tell you what, sometimes you think it's Satan up there, don't you? Eh? With their licorice all sorts. Eh? Dishing up the Allens. Allens lolly teaching. <laughs> Candy cane. Candy cane reverence. The candy man can cause he mixes it with lies to make the world taste good. Huh? Old Danny Kay with the candy man. <laughs> huh? Let me read that again. Be so vigilant because. Mm. The adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Then it says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us, see the omni the God of all grace, the Omni, of all power, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> you know, this world uh, <coughs> offers... The world offers courses. And professions. The world says, oh, you know, we'll, we'll give you a professional to help you. Everyone pays top dollar. Oh, he's professional. He's got a piece of paper that says he's a professional, whatever. But they've got these fake promises and dark light. All they can dish up is dark light. Because they're not born again. They're not walking in the light. You know, and anything's liable under those uh, conditions. And we'll give you a course, we'll put you on a course. Might be a course of medicine. It might be a course of uh, theological study of some degree. Uh, a horse is a horse, of course. But no, the horses can talk, unless it's Mr. Ed, of course. But uh, I offer, and the people of God offer, and the disciples of Jesus offer, uh, 
Jesus. <laughs> Jesus as the one and only, the one and only one to empower, empower you. Hey? The one with all authority. Because Father gave it to him, remember? In the writings of Matthew 28. All authority has been given to me. See, he's the one. He's the one. He's the one to follow and walk with. He's got all the authority. <laughs> I walk with the one with all the authority. All the authority. Are you listening? Can someone say amen? You might want to say am I or why. That's okay. That's where you're at. But I'm going to say amen. I'm going to read this and finish. Matthew 28. And the verse is 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's it. What a way to finish. All authority. A double L. That means omni. Huh? Always walk on the omni side of life. <laughs> hey? All authority. I walk with the one with all the authority. What do you reckon? You know, a lot of people walk with the Pope. A lot of people walk with Buddha. A lot of people walk with uh, Muhammad. A lot of people walk with um, Joseph Smith. Or um, maybe some that Armstrong bloke. Armstrongism. Uh, they might walk with Benny Hindrance. Or Joyce Meyer and the Maori Clay Minister. Or Jerry Savelle and the con men. Or Kenneth Copeland and, and the con men. But I walk with the one with all the authority. <laughs> and I tell everyone that. I tattoo it on my skin. That I'm the property of the one with all the authority. His name is Jesus. And everyone said... Amen.